This is Andy Perawa for Boxing News. I'm joined by Richie Woodall here in Saudi Arabia. Richie, always good to see you. Uh, how are you? How was your journey over? Yeah, very good. We had a good journey over, thank you. Um, it was only a six hour flight, so um, it was okay. A big card to look forward to on Saturday night, a Saturday night, a big one to end the year on for us. Um, just start off with the main event, Anthony Joshua Ottavalin. Obviously, AJ, somebody you'll know well from his time in GB, time training with obviously Robert. What have you made of his, his kind of his persona this week, his somewhat of an attitude with the media. What have you made of seeing him like that? I think he's seen it all before, hasn't he? You know, he's very experienced now, and probably he doesn't enjoy this side of the game um, as much as he, as he used to. Um, and because people question this about him, question that about him, then you know, he, like I say, this side of it now it's probably affecting him a little bit more, and that's why he's a little bit. He doesn't want. He doesn't want to react to things, and I can understand that uh, because um, I was I was very similar in that I didn't enjoy this part of boxing. But that's, that's you know you, you you've got to be a part of this if you want to be a fighter, if you want to be a champion. This is what it's all about, and uh, I just don't think he enjoys it as much as he used to. Really, is there any risk that seeing him like this might be kind of a negative? thought process going into Saturday, Saturday night and he all might come to the fore and we might not see that performance everybody's hoping to see. No, I don't think so. I think the opposite. I think I think he looks switched on, to be quite honest. Um, he doesn't want to engage with, with people too much and I can understand that. He just wants to get on with um, with, with boxing Otto, uh, Otto Valin. Um, so I, I can see where he's coming from. I don't think it will affect him in a negative way. I'm hoping it won't. I think... Um, Otto Valin is a real good opponent for him, awkward, but they've had history between the two. The boxers amateurs, he beat him as amateur twice. I've seen some real good sparring sessions when Anthony Joshua was preparing for Charles Martin for his first world title fight. Robert McCracken brought Otto Valin in for some sparring. And, uh, you know, he sparred well with AJ, but AJ, you could always see, was sort of um, not in top gear, really. And so deep down, I think that that means a lot. And deep down, you're thinking that He'll believe that he's got his number, that's how I see it, and I've seen beating him. Obviously, you mentioned there the amateur days, the sparring together. People have been a little bit critical of Anthony's most recent performances. Do you feel though, on Saturday night we will see a bit more of an explosive finish, a bit more of what we were used to maybe a few years back? Well, that may, that will probably depend on how Otto Valin fights. If Otto Valin st stays on the outside as a southpaw and boxes long, and stays on his back foot, then it's going to be much different, much more harder to get that right hand on him, you see. Whereas Valin, I think, is a good all-rounder. He can box on the back foot, he can box going forward, like he did against Tyson Fury. He showed a different side to his, different side to his style. He can go forward and be effective. If he goes forward against Anthony Joshua, I think that will be his undoing, because I think he'll walk onto a good right hand. So if you see Valin coming over his front foot and, push, and, and forcing the fight, to AJ, then I think um, AJ wins by knockout, and I think he will, he will catch him probably later on in the contest. So, really, for Valin, he's got a little bit of a dilemma on his hands because I think from La Anthony Joshua's last few performances, I think he's watching his engine a little bit more now. He's just saving himself, so he may be questioning his engine a little bit. Um, and if that's the case, if Otto Valin is seeing it that way, then Valin's going to be thinking, well, I've got to up the pace here and really put him under a little bit of pressure. But by putting him under pressure, he might walk onto a shot. So who knows? I just feel that if Otto Valin comes forward, he, he walks onto a big punch from, from AJ. Just final thing with all things Anthony Joshua, a couple rather. Um, he's teamed up with Ben Davison and we've seen him float back with different trainers over the last few years. What do you make of that move? And he's, like I say, moving around, floating about. Well, people have asked me that before in the past, and I think you should never have left Rob McCracken, to be quite honest. But, you know, boxers go there different ways. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, he's a bit... He's a bit I don't, know where, I don't know whether the term teaching a young, an old dog new tricks comes into it. Maybe it does. But um, listen, Ben Davison is a very, very good trainer. He may see things a little bit differently to other, other coaches. But I just feel that he shouldn't have left McCracken, really. I thought he had a lot of success with Rob and he should have stayed with Rob McCracken. Let's wait and see. The proof of the pudding will be in the eating. And um, I wish him luck. And I, and I wish Ben Davison luck as well. Final thing, all the talk around Deontay Wilder. Um, what have you made of that as it's come up, come up throughout this week? Again, a distraction for AJ to try and deal with, a distraction for Wilder to try and deal with too. Yeah, I mean, Wilder in a similar situation in that he's probably one of the most experienced heavyweights sitting up there um, t today. Seen it all before, as you said. Still has a desire to be the number one in the world, you know, and he knows that 
if he wins here, then he could. He, who knows? He might get the winner of Usyk and, and, and Fury. It might be another Tyson Fury fight. Who knows with with Deontay Wilder? But he still he still has that belief. And when you've got a fighter who has that type of belief, he's still dangerous. Still got that knockout shot that he can produce in the in the opening rounds or the final rounds. He's one of those rare heavyweights that produces really hard power punches in the final rounds of a fight. You know, you don't get many heavyweights doing that. So um, he's still a good fighter. Still has the desire. You never know with Deontay, but. Um, Sitting up there, like I've said, a bit like AJ, similar experience, seen it all before. Moving away from him, guys, Jarrell Miller, Daniel Dubois, uh, a fantastic fight everybody's looking forward to. It's been very heated as weeks built up. What do you make of Daniel kind of putting it on Jarrell a little bit today? Brilliant, comes out of his, come out of his shell a little bit there, didn't he, Daniel? Um, I think they'll have a game plan. I think, you know, I think Daniel Dubois has got to box at long range got to box behind that jab which is probably what he does best anyway when he gets involved he can be a little bit more vulnerable but when he's boxing at range behind his jab he's got one of the best jabs in, in heavyweight boxing today uh, Daniel Dubois and I know that because I've padded him many many times when he was at GB terrific jab great straight right hand so if he can keep Miller at bay keep him off balance because it's not a soft jab it's a real hard shot that he throws if you can break him down with that jab then great he'll have a static target in front of him Miller's not one up on his toes you know he's big he'd be 23 stone he's, you know, he's, he's a big unit he's going to come forward he's going to try and close that gap down and put it on Daniel so he might just walk on to shots it's whether Daniel can keep him at bay keep him, at, keep him boxing at distance if Miller can drag him into a toe to toe scrap then you know your money's probably on Miller if Daniel boxes mid to long, keeps him on the end of those jabs, straight right hand, it'll be Daniel Dubois all, all, all day long. And I think eventually he'll break Miller down and probably stop him. One of the fights to get your thoughts on on Saturday night, the man who many consider to be the best cruiserweight in the world, Joel jo Pataya faces Elis Zorro. A uh, big task for Elis Zorro. I'm sure you're the same as everybody who didn't necessarily agree with the IBF stance on Joel Pataya fighting Elis, but what's your take on this fight? How big of an underdog is Elis Zorro? He's a massive underdog, you know, um, huge underdog. And I spoke to him earlier and I said, listen, just go out and enjoy it. Go and show people what you can do because you have got a lot of talent. You're undefeated. You've always wanted to box sort of uh, outside the York Hall because had so many fights at the York Hall. This is one of the biggest stages in the world. The whole world's going to be watching. Just go out there and enjoy yourself, son. That's what I said to him. And he should because he's got nothing to lose because everyone's expecting him to lose. And so if Jai Apatai um, takes his eye off the, off the ball type of thing and underestimates Elis Zorro you just never know in this game but like I said to El, you've got nothing to lose you must go and enjoy it and just show people what you can do because you have talent and you know again I wish him all the best but it's a tough tough night for him Richie just final thing away from all of this next year early next year Callum Smith travels over to Canada to face Otto Betabiev big ask big fight but people talk about timing in boxing is the timing right for Callum Smith? Well what's um Better be have now. He's what, he's late late thirties, late thirties, isn't he? You know, Callum Smith. His talent te technique is brilliant. He really is, um, Callum. Fought obviously been world champion, and. Um, you know, he's fought these type of guys in the past, but with Better be have, it's it, it's keeping him at bay. You know, he's a, he's very very strong when he gets to you. It's breaking him down. But but Callum's got the. He's got the talent and got the skill to do that. What I think he's got to do mainly is try and box from the centre of the ring. Keep him on the outside. Don't let him push you back. Even when he does come forward, if you can grab and hold and then push off and then start again. But stay in the centre of the ring. If, if Better BF pushes you back to the ropes, then he really unloads and we know how tough and how, how powerful he is. But for me, can Callum do it? Of course he can do it. Because when you've got that type of skill, of course you can do it. But yeah. It's, it's probably the toughest fight in the light heavyweight division along with a, a Bivol fight. One final thing on that fight then, when I speak to people about it, ask them, they say that they wouldn't be surprised if at some point it becomes a little bit of a shootout and it's whoever's standing at the end. Would you be surprised if you were to see that at some point between the pair of them? Be, be, between Smith and um, Better Beev? I hope not, because then that brings Better Beev, uh, or Better Beev, I don't know, which one, whatever, Better Beev. <laughs> You know, it really brings him into it, and that's what he'll—that's what he'll want from Callum Smith. He'll want to shoot out. I think Callum, you know, sometimes has got to hold his ground, you know, and sit down on his shots and, and have a go with him. Yes, but not 
for short periods, if you do it for long periods against Better B, every t he tends to come through because he's a strong guy. I think Callum's got to use his skills, come in at different angles, lots of sidesteps, you know, try and box at range. Yes, stand occasionally and give it to him, but just don't do it for, for long periods. Um, can he win? Yes, he can. He's got to have that belief, but it's going to be tough. But the Smiths are a talented, talented family, and if anyone can do it, it can be him. Richie, listen, I appreciate your time now. I'm sure you want to go and relax for the rest of this evening, so thank you for speaking to me, and I'm sure I'll catch up with you again before or after, whenever it may be, and also hope you have a good Christmas and New Year's. Thank you, Andy. All the best, mate. All the